Our next example is extremely similar to the first. The only difference in the code here versus the code before is that we're updating I in a different way. So just as we saw with our previous example, let's begin by trying to write that table that I made that captures how does I relate to the number of iterations of the while loop. So we want to keep track of the number of iterations, which I'm just going to label as iterations, and the value of I, which I'm just going to label with an I. Save myself some handwriting by doing that. I need to say, what is the initial value of I? Well, I starts at one, and it's updated by multiplying by two. So after one iteration finishes, we'll multiply that value by two. After two iterations finish, I'll multiply the previous value by two, so that's four. After three iterations, well, it's eight, and maybe you can write these in some better ways to try and identify a pattern. Instead of four, maybe I write that as two squared. And maybe instead of eight, I write that as two cubed. And now this is looking a lot like two to the number of iterations. So after k iterations, the value of i appears to be two to the k. And you should always check this against the values you've already written in this table to verify that at least for those values, it seems to work. And if we look at this, well, it's when it's three, it's two to the three. When it's two, it's two to the two. When it's one, it's two to the one. When it's zero, it's two to the zero. Definitely seems to check out for all the values that I wrote. And again, if we think about the intuition here, this should be intuitively obvious in the sense that we're continually multiplying by two. Continued multiplication is exponentiation. So the fact that this looks exponential, 2 to the k, is unsurprising. So I know now how to relate the number of iterations to the value of i. And now I want to try to find out when does this while loop stop. As we said in our previous video, we can do that by finding out when does i equal the stopping condition. With the caveat that this is a slight approximation, we're ignoring one or two iterations by doing that. but damn near close to the exact number of iterations. So this stops when i is equal to n, or approximately then, and i is equal to 2 to the k, so it's 2 to the k equals n. We want to solve that for k, so if we take a log base 2 of both sides, we get k equals log base 2 of n. So this while loop iterates approximately log base 2 of n times. And just with our previous example, we saw that the way we compute the total running time is by taking the number of iterations and multiplying by the cost of each iteration. So t of n is just equal to c times log base 2 of n, which means t of n is in theta of log of n. Thus, t of n is in theta of log n. And while the last one might have been intuitively obvious that it was about n divided by 10-ish, just glancing at it, this one, a lot of people mess up logs and exponents and exactly how they work. This probably wasn't so clear at the start. And in fact, when we get into more complex examples, this is where we're going to need to start to be really careful is when we have these exponential and logs in our problems.